So thank you everyone for joining us this evening. We are extremely excited to introduce you to our new chancellor. This a community we're very proud of and thank you for being here tonight and being representative of the community that we are so very proud of. I'm not gonna take a lot of your time. Normally a far more charming, taller, better looking guy named Dave Zeke would be doing this, but I'm gonna do it in his stead tonight. He's sorry he can't be here. So let me just really quickly recognize some important people here. First of all, we have some sponsors in the room, Multicare and Columbia Bank. But please feel free, City of Tacoma, Port of Tacoma, and the Economic Development Board of Tacoma and Pierce County. So thank you to all of you for making this an event a possibility. I also want to acknowledge a few people. We have some, I think, port commissioners who plan on being here, Connie Bacon and Don Johnson. Um, from our state delegation, we have Randy Becker, Steve Conway, and Jeannie Darnell. Uh, Pierce County Council, I think Derek Young is here. From the city of DuPont, Michael Graham, the mayor. Uh, from Tacoma City Council, Ryan Mello and Rob Toms. And from our regents, Marnie Brown, who's our student regent, and Herb Simon. All of you, if you're here, please show your hands. Okay. So last but not least, please allow me to introduce a couple people who really don't need any. Um, we have Congressman Derek Kilmer and Congressman Denny Heck here with us. If I could ask the two of you to come up and be by the stage here, um, maybe uh, Congressman Kilmer, if you would uh, join me at the, at the podium first. Oh wait, I saw you do Rochambeau, do you wanna do it that way? Okay, okay, you beat him, so you're first. <laughs> All right, hello everybody. I'm actually going to direct these remarks to our new chancellor. Um, I really, I guess I'm here just to say three things. One, a welcome. You are in a room full of people who are excited uh, to be your partners and your colleagues and your collaborators. So welcome. Uh, welcome to this institution and this community. Uh, second, on behalf of my office and the four UWT alums who work for us, I want to say thank you and please keep the pipeline coming uh, to our office. Uh, we are. I have four very talented uh, graduates of this institution who work on our team. And the third thing I want to say is uh, we're excited that you're here and that you understand and value the important role that this institution plays in this community. It's actually ironic because uh, the etymology of the word chancellor uh, is actually, it's a Latin word uh, derived from uh, the man at the barrier. That's what chancellor means. and. Um, I mean, the, the fact is, I think we're excited about you and we're all excited about the ins this institution because it's an institution about removing barriers. Removing barriers between town and gown, removing barriers between academia and the business community, removing barriers between researchers and new discoveries and new innovations, and most importantly, removing barriers for students. Uh, so that regardless of their upbringing or their background, they are able to pursue and achieve educational opportunities and economic opportunities. Um, this is such a special place, and it's special in large part because it has figured out how to be an elite institution without being an elitist institution. And we are all grateful for that dynamic. So um, uh, we're excited that you're here, uh, not to be the man at the barrier, uh, but to be uh, the opener of the door to the business community, to our students, uh, and to a great uh, environment for the people who work here as well. So um, we welcome you through this door. Uh, we welcome you to this community, and uh, please consider me a partner. Thank you. Leave it to my incredibly messy roommate who has a PhD from Oxford to get to the Latin word root of the, <laughs> seriously. My name's Felix Unger, that was Oscar Madison. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here too and to welcome you, Chancellor Pagano, for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, Mark's father was a first generation Italian American. I am married to a first generation Italian American. She's Calabrese, they have a expression in Italy, testadura, which means hard-headed. I find that to be the case. But on the other hand, Mark, I want you to know the truth is most Calabres don't consider Sicilians, which you are, actually to even be Italian, given all 
that is said and done. Uh, walking over here, I had the great privilege to sit down with Mark for a few minutes and pass that plaque that reminded me that this is the 25th anniversary of the establishment of the University of Washington Tacoma. I had a privilege and pleasure beyond measure, beyond words, to actually be serving as the chief of staff to Governor William Booth Gardner when we stood this institution up. And I treasure his memory and his con contributions to this state. And I'm just frankly kind of reveling in it here today and remembering his memory and all that he did for us. Mark, welcome. I, uh, I think Derek said it very well. There's just one more partnership that I would like to call out because I think it's integral to the success of this institution and frankly for the success of this region. And that is building on the incredible legacy, speaking of those whose memories that we hold dear in our hearts, and that is of Deborah Friedman's partnership with Joint Base Lewis McCord and with the veterans in this community. Uh, she forged an unbelievable commitment to making this a vet-friendly campus, and God bless her for that. Uh, there is a great deal that we all gain from that, as a matter of fact, and I trust that that is a part of what you will build on moving forward. I frankly think that having some measure of veterans in classes where they're probably the first to arrive and they turn their homework in on time and they actually like following the rules is a, is a positive influence on... Uh, on an academic institution and well frankly with all due respect to all my friends in the audience in uniform and members of the service general collins forgive me they probably could benefit from the occasional questioning of authority and whatever it is the professor is saying at that particular moment we all win if this institution keeps maintains and builds upon its partnership with veterans and our very, very, very important Joint Base Lewis McCord. With that, sir, Paisan, uh, I raise my hands in respect to you. The Northern Salish would say, Osiem Haishka, which is to welcome you to our community. We look forward to doing whatever it is, my messy roommate and I, whatever it is we can do to help. We are here to do it. Thank you. I think you should give them a big round of applause just for naming themselves Oscar and Felix. Felix, Felix. <laughs> so President Kause and Provost Baldesty were not able to join us this evening. However, they did send this message to Dr. Pagano. Hello, everybody. I'm here with Provost Baldesty to welcome Chancellor Mark Pagano to the University of Washington at Tacoma and to Husky Nation. Mark, I want to join Anamari in welcoming you to the University of Washington. It was great meeting you when you were interviewing, and I look forward to working with you in the years ahead. We wish we could be there in person, but we're really pleased to be there in spirit. Thank, Thank you. you. Go Huskies! <laughs> So it's my pleasure to introduce a great friend to UW-Tacoma, um, Lois Bernstein, Senior Vice President of Community Services at Multicare Multi Health Systems, is on the Milgard School of Business Advisory Board, the Tacoma Pierce County Chamber of Commerce, the Broadway Center Board, the Crystal Judson Family Justice Center Board. There, the list goes on and on, and we're very lucky to count her amongst our friends. And she's here to help us to welcome Dr. Pagano as well. So Lois, if you'd come up. The mic goes down. <laughs> so, good evening. I had the opportunity to meet Chancellor Pagano and his wife Kelly last week. And at the time, Dr. Pagano talked about his decision making process in coming to the University of Washington, Tacoma. He said that he and Kelly came downtown, they walked around, they looked at UWT, they walked around our vibrant downtown Tacoma. And Mark said to Kelly, we need to be here. So not only did Chancellor Pagano realize what a gem UWT is, he also understood how unique and awesome a city Tacoma is. So thank you for that. 
We know that he has uh, good judgment, and it's one of his many strong qualities, but he has a, a very impressive list of uh, qualities and achievements. Um, Dr. Mark Bagano, the fourth chancellor of the University of Washington, Tacoma, grew up in Southern Illinois. He has a BS in engineering, was a first generation student, an MS in engineering, and a PhD in engineering science from Southern Illinois University, Carbondale. After receiving his bachelor's degree, he worked for a time in an engineering office in Chicago designing power plants. And then he returned to Carbondale for his master's degree and served as a teaching assistant. He soon realized he loved teaching and decided to get his doctorate. And he has many teaching awards to lay testament to the work that he did at Carbondale. Dr. Pagano became an assistant and then an associate professor at Southern Illinois University Carbondale. He focused on his role as a faculty member, winning teaching awards and carrying out research into the problems of chlorine in Illinois coal. In 1992, he moved to Purdue University, where he attained the rank of full professor and served in increasingly complex administrative positions, department chair, assistant dean, associate dean, associate vice provost, and dean. And in 2011, he moved to Montana State University Billings, an urban serving university like our own, where he served as provost and vice chancellor for academic affairs. So Chancellor Pagano, thank you for joining our wonderful university. As a community, we're excited to work with you in your new role. And it is with great pleasure that I introduce the University of Washington Tacoma Chancellor, Dr. Mark Pagano. Thank you, Lois. I've only been here two weeks, but she's definitely my new best friend. And I wanted to clarify something. Josh said that uh, we were expecting somebody taller and better looking. I thought he was talking about me. <laughs> and then one more thing, too. Uh, I was a little disappointed when Derek told us the origin of the word chancellor. As a going away, away present from uh, Montana State University Billings, they gave me a, a jersey. It was a Seahawks jersey, and it said chancellor across the back. So. <laughs> I thought you all named your chief officer after the player. So, welcome to all of you as well. Thank you very much for attending. This means a lot to me. I've been welcomed very warmly the past two weeks. It seems like I've been at several different uh, venues like this. We had a, a forum here on campus of internal people, a town hall. Everywhere I've been welcomed very warmly and it's not changing tonight. I couldn't be more pleased to be here. Now, I know I've already met many of you, many of you tonight, many of you at these other venues, but for those of you I have not met, hello. Very good to meet you, and I look forward to talking to you more this evening or throughout the coming years. Now, I'm not going to take a lot of time either, but I want to do four things quickly. First, I want to introduce you to my family, who unfortunately can't be here, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. Then I want to tell you just a little bit about the interaction leading up to me taking this position, and I'll mention the the president. And then I want to cover my first two weeks and talk a little bit about what's going on at University of Washington Tacoma. And then I want to talk just briefly, briefly at the end about the plan moving forward, what we'll do next. So my family, uh, Lois already mentioned my wife, Kelly. Actually, Kelly had more to do with it than me. She said I was going to get a job here. I said I would like to, and she said you are. So uh, uh, she has been here several times. She came and not only helped me pick out the job that I wanted, she uh, came, helped me pick out the house. Uh, she came, helped me move here. She drove the, the uh, Ford and the U-Haul, and I drove the pickup truck that looked like the Beverly Hillbillies, so she helped move me here. Uh, and then she came last week to an event. But unfortunately, she's back in Montana. She'll be there for uh, about four more weeks, and then she'll be joining me here. But I also have three adult children. I have a son, Joseph, who lives in the Seattle area, uh, has for since November. Uh, he's my oldest. I have a middle son, Ben, who moved with me to Billings, Montana in 2011, met 
a Billings, Montana girl. Uh, and they have now produced my first grandson, Ari, back in January. So I'm thrilled about that. And he'll be staying in Montana for now. Her family's all from there. And, and then my youngest, my daughter, Megan, graduated from Colorado State University last May. And she's doing what I call her ski season. She's li living in Bozeman, Montana, right across from the ski resort, the Bridger Mountain Ski Resort, doing her skiing that she deserves after college. But uh, I'm going to try to recruit her to Washington soon. So that's my uh, immediate family. I also have a stepson, Kelly's son, Roman, who is 22. He'll be joining us here, and he's an MSUB student right now, and hopefully he will be able to attend uh, UW-Tacoma next fall. Now, unfortunately, I lost my father. Uh, he uh, was born in Heron, Illinois. Uh, my grandfather came to Heron, Illinois in 1910. Well, he actually came to New York, but migrated to Heron, Illinois. So my father never left Heron. He lived there for 87 years. Uh, my mother is still living. She lives right there in Heron. Uh, she is also from Southern Illinois. Uh, I have two sisters that live in that same town and kind of watch after mom. And I have a younger brother, Scott, who lives in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So that kind of rounds out my immediate family. And then I have a whole bunch of in-laws who will all be visiting, and I'll introduce you to them as well. <laughs> so um, we just heard from Anamari. And let me just tell you a little bit about her. Now, granted, I was thrilled to death when I first came here. This was July 18th, the, the day after you advertised the job, and Kelly and I decided this place was for us. Well, then later, it was much later, it takes, it takes us a long time to do these things. In December, when I interviewed and I had two days, two very productive days on campus, uh, that was wonderful. But when I went up to Seattle and uh, met with Anna Marie, I was sold. It was a done deal there. She is a great person. Uh, I'm thrilled that she's our interim leader right now, and I think the university's in really good hands. Uh, what she did, this is the kind of person she is, she could tell that I was a little uptight, a little bit excited. So what she did is uh, she called me on Christmas Eve and said, Mark, I am going to offer you uh, the chancellor job at University of Washington Tacoma, but not today. You know, it's Christmas Eve, I had a house full of uh, family and friends, and I know, do you do too? So if you just settle down, I'll uh, talk to you on Friday, or Saturday, I think it was, which she did. Uh, so it, she's a wonderful person, and I really look forward to, to working with her. So it's all worked out, but the way it worked out was a, a little difficult. Uh, immediately after accepting the job in early January, I talked to, to my boss, and I was the the second in command at Montana State University Billings, and uh, being provost and academic vice chancellor, I was in charge of all the promotions, which is a very important thing to do. So my boss, when I told him that I was uh, accepting a job here, said, well, can you shepherd the promotions through? So I agreed to do that, so I was kind of conflicted. I needed to stay here to get that done, stay there to get that done, and I was so excited to come here. So I actually worked on Friday, uh, March 13th, about a half a day. We went home, packed up, the moving van, uh, sort of, because we're still in the process of moving, and then Saturday morning drove all the way, 15 hours, from there to here in the rain, getting me ready for what was going to happen. Uh, and then Sunday, Kelly flew back. I moved into my office and started as your chancellor on Monday. So I'm not recommending that. It wasn't a good idea, but it's kind of my personality. I was so excited to, to do it that way, and uh, I'm here now. I have a couple weeks jump on it, so I'm very excited. Now, we have purchased a home. Our home is just north of campus. It's been taking me between eight and 12 minutes to get back and forth. It's uh, kind of halfway between Old Town and Proctor. It's a lovely home. It uh, has a great view of the sound, uh, the mountain, but the, a couple trees are right in the peak, but you can see it sticking out either side. And it's a great place to entertain, so I want to have all of you over, but just not at the same time, okay? <laughs> All right, so what have I been up to so far? Well, just what I told uh, the crowd, the people that came to my interview, I was very clear with them. They asked me to address uh, my view of the future of higher education in light of uh, the University of Washington Tacoma's urban serving mission, so I talked about that. And then I took a step forward uh, and talked about how we would continue that mission and advance it into the next 25 years. So I was very clear. They asked me to come, or you all asked me to come, so I think I'm safest if I stick with that. So uh, I was actually talking with the vice chancellor today. I think I'm going to get that presentation out and show it to everybody so they'll see what I'm doing uh, as we put this plan together for how we build the foundation for the future. So um, I've been working on two different things, meeting all of you, and tonight goes a long way uh, at doing that, but I've also 
needed to uh, meet and learn my institution. I, I do know that we're strong, we're nimble, we're attached to this wonderful organization, University of Washington, we're motivated, and we have great things going on here. Uh, we have a record number of applicants for this coming autumn, and if everything goes... If everything goes as planned and we follow our recent growth efforts, uh, we'll be on target to have the largest student body next fall as well. So that's exciting too. Uh, as far as physical improvements go, you can't walk around campus without seeing new things happening. Construction is always kind of a pain, but it means something big is about to happen. So we've got the construction on the north end of campus where we're straightening out the road. We're actually going to improve transportation and improve green space up there. So I'm excited about that. And like any good engineer, they're taking the opportunity to fix or improve uh, the stormwater drainage as they're building that project from the hilltop down to the sound. So that's exciting. Uh, we have some renovation going on a little south of here in McDonald Smith Hall. It's one of the uh, historic uh, buildings almost at the end, and that's going to be remodeled into 50 new faculty offices, much needed faculty offices. And pending the outcome of the state legislative session, next year we'll start a major renovation of the last unrestored building, the unrestored historic building on campus, the Tacoma Paper and Stationery Building. We really need that space. It represents 40,000 square feet of flexible space that we can use to improve the life of our students. And then in the future, we have plans to do some work on that Tioga Building and the Swiss Building is back. So in a short time, we've really advanced this campus. Now let's also talk about the people, because the people are more important than the facilities. Uh, in the area of student success, many outstanding things. Every day we're hearing something new about our students. Uh, we have sophomore Omar Adam. He'll be the first Charles B. Rangel International Affairs Scholar during summer 2015. He's one of just 15 of these scholars nationwide, so we're really proud of that. Uh, and we have a position on campus that's working with these students to help increase the number of uh, recognitions like this. And I, I had the opportunity to travel with her, Cindy. Uh, that's her job to help our students get these uh, fellowships. So it, it will raise our prestige and it will raise the prestige of the students and help them as well. Uh, we had two Bonnerman travel fellows this year, uh, Nicholas Rosian from Social Work and Chantel Johnson from Environmental Science. And this, this year we have another one, Kevin Bogue, who we learned about today, also got one of these fellowships. Uh, we also have Lizeth Garcia, who received her bachelor's degree in politics, philosophy, and economics last, well, in 2013. She's been named an alternate to the Fulbright, Fulbright Scholar Program, so we're very proud of that as well. And then the U.S. Department of State awards Gilman scholarships each year for international study and a student's discipline, uh, students that have limited financial means to do something like this. So it's an outstanding fellowship, and this year, uh, Christine Brubaker Holland of healthcare leadership and Tiffany Fox of Global Studies received the Gilman Scholarship to study in China. And this spring, Amy Nguyen of Psychology is going to be a Gil Gilbert Scholar as well. And she's going to go to Osaka, Japan, Osaka University in Japan. In social work, a team of undergraduate students were recognized this year with the National Influencing State Policy Award for their work advocating in Olympia on behalf of patients diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Students in our social work problem, guided Professor Janice Loco, have guided by Professor Janice Losco, and I am really butchering some of these folks' names. I have not been here long enough to learn everybody's names. They've received this award in seven of the past 11 years, so we're very proud of that. Well, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about at least a couple of our faculty recognitions. Uh, we have a tremendous faculty, and they're doing great things as well. Zoe Barnes from the Milgard School of Business has been elected as the vice chair of the UW Faculty Senate. This group represents more than 4,500 faculty across all three campuses, and she's the first faculty member from Tacoma or Bothell to be in this position. We're extremely excited about that and the recognition and visibility that will give our campus, and we're excited for her and the professional development and the, uh, the success she'll have in her career from doing this. Uh, Erica Klein is Chair of Sciences and Mathematics in the School of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences, and she operates a lab of about five people on campus, which just received the gold level as a certified green lab by the UW campus, and of their 4,500 labs system-wide, this is the first one away from Seattle that's got that designation. 
Then Charles Emlett of Social Work has been invited to participate as a delegate of one, in one of five forums held at the White House Conference on Aging. That's only held once each decade since 1961. He's a nationally recognized expert on the needs of older adults. And then lastly but not least, Katie Hurling of Nursing has been named a Robert Wood Johnson's Foundation Nurse Faculty Scholar, one of just 12 in the nation to receive $350,000 award to support her research. So let's hear it for our faculty and staff. Now from listening to this overview of some of the great things that are going on with our facilities and our faculty and staff, you can see that this doesn't happen by happenstance. Uh, the chancellor's role is to organize and advance that kind of activity through strategic and well thought out planning. So that's kind of what my uh, mission is going to be over the next several years. As I talked during my interview, I plan on leading the campus through a very collaborative process to come up with our vision based on our dream. And when I, say, when I say our vision based on our dream, I don't just mean the campus, I mean you as well. We're going to involve all the stakeholders from Tacoma, the South Sand and the state of South Sound and the state of Washington to figure out what's the best thing with the resources we have that we can do for this community and the citizens of the state of Washington. Now that's a complicated undertaking. We'll do it deliberately, we'll do it strategically, and we'll do it thoughtfully. Uh, I've done this in several of my positions before, just never for the entire university. Uh, and we will take advantage of the great work that the late Chancellor Friedman uh, has done before us. We'll take that information. We'll take more information from all of you. We'll work with our uh, stakeholders and we'll frame this plan. Now, we've already gotten started. Uh, one of the first things we did is uh, this past week, I took a team of six of us to an AACNU, that's the American Associate, no, the Association of American Colleges and University Conferences, a very well-known group that helps advance what we do in higher education. They had their annual diversity conference, and our team went there, and our, uh, our objective was to frame our strategic plan in that kind of culture. We want every student that comes to UW-Tacoma to feel welcomed, we want to celebrate the culture, what they can bring to the table, and move the campus forward. So whatever we plan to do, we're going to uh, put that plan into four pillars. And the way I look at those pillars are they're right along the same lines as what the campus has taken on as its uh, four foundational uh, goals. And that's what I, I use DICE to remember it. It's diversity, innovation, community, and excellence. So whatever it is that we plan to, get, to do together, we will do it with that lens. So anyway, one of, one of the, the best quotes that I got from that conference that I think is going to stick with me is we don't just want to invite our students to the dance, we want to ask them to dance. So I thought that was really uh, good and uh, applicable to what we want to do here at University of Washington Tacoma. So as we work and move forward on all of these activities and embrace and enhance the signature areas for UW Tacoma, such as sustainability, K-12 partnerships, appreciation for the arts, STEM, all those things I've already talked to many of you about. We're going to formulate these dreams and construct the foundation for the next 25 years with the solid framework we've already established. And with the University of Washington behind us and the Tacoma community alongside us, we will prevail. So thank you for coming tonight and please enjoy the rest of the evening.